Return of the Obra Dinn is a name well known to indie gamers at this point, but as it's just made the transition from PC to all major consoles, I thought it a fitting time to, well, return to the dark, watery embrace of Lucas Pope's nautical masterpiece. Fortunately, our trip doesn't require a memento mortem watch, but a little backstory is in order. Pope is essentially a one-man games company who lives and works in Japan, produces titles through his company 3909, and may in fact be as infallible as his surname implies. He earned massive love from gamers by creating, developing, programming, modeling, scoring, and everything else his debut game Papers, Please, about the high-stakes world of checking people's travel papers as they cross the border into a fictional Soviet-era satellite state called Arstotska. By layering a series of tasks, puzzles, storytelling beats, and moral quandaries, Pope took something inherently mundane and elevated it to an insane degree. And as Pope has said one of his primary passions is building programming and implementation tools, that makes sense. LP sees the beauty in the mundane but necessary process of problem solving, not for the credit, or to see your work manifested in a slick 3D virtual environment at some later date, but simply to keep the project on track, to help the workers to your left and right keep things moving smoothly, by lavishing attention and craftsmanship on details of life that we often overlook and which so often culminate in outsized consequences we never could have predicted, Pope is able to mine for gaming gems most of us don't even realize are buried right beneath our feet. But as miners go, he's slow. Obra Dinn, the story of an East India Company insurance adjuster and their magic pocket watch, took four and a half years to create. Part of the challenge was Pope's insistence on rendering a 3D environment with one-bit graphics. Yes, that's right, one bit, as in each pixel can only be black or white, as in Mario would have looked down on this graphics engine back when he was called Jumpman, as in a nostalgic blast to the face for anyone who grew up playing classic one-bit games like Loom, Dark Castle, Scarab of Raw, Spelunks, or Kid Picks. And through the haze of dot-shaded blood and spittle, Obra Dinn offers players an epic tale of death and tragedy from the depths of a Lovecraftian sea. Uniquely, however, that tale can only be uncovered frozen moment by frozen moment as you painstakingly revisit the final instant of each crew person's life. Like so many games, Obra Dinn is fascinated by death, but unlike most, the 60-some lives you will see extinguished over the course of the game have nothing in common with the masked thugs or slobbering aliens you're used to fragging. Instead, you find yourself immersed in a novel-like web of intertwined lives, interdependent plot lines, and maddening puzzles, all without the aid of audio logs, hastily dropped notes, or any of the standard storytelling tropes gaming has come to rely on. And more importantly, you will come to know the faces, voices, names, and character of each and every member of the Doomed Voyage, if you've got the patience and problem-solving ability. As much as it's a game, Return of the Obra Dinn is also a tool, a tool Pope designed to teach, or maybe force himself, to learn how to use many other tools. And it's a tool he's shared with us, so that we can experience the transcendent, mundane joy of untying a logical knot, only to find an eerie, gripping, and very human story hiding inside. Whatever you make of the game, don't forget to put it in your ledger.